We yeah. just we just used up five of our minutes. So I'm I can talk <laughs> really quickly, but <laughs> listen, I'm so happy to be here. I am so comfortable with a small group today. I am very delighted to be here on behalf of NASA's Globe Observer Citizen Science Program. And today I'm going to be talking about the Globe Observer Mosquito Habitat Mapper, which is a research and teaching tool that uh, we developed uh, just about four years ago. Uh, it is a wonderful way to connect your, your classroom to lots of different things that we don't normally get to do in earth science, connecting to remote sensing, to climate change, to environmental equity, and public health. And those two last features, I think, is one reason that I think this is really exciting because um, there's a lot of applied science done with earth system data, and we don't always get a chance to tell our students about that. So I look at this as a way to get those students who hey, yeah, maybe I want to become a doctor, or I really like biology, but I hate rocks. This is a way to get them engaged in learning more about earth science. Okay, please uh, note my, um, my email here because I would love to chat with you. Uh, if, and if you're interested in uh, working with this data, developing a lesson with this data, um, teaching it in your classroom, we are here to help you and we would love to hear from you. Okay. Without further ado, I'm going to try and <laughs> move forward with this screen. There we go. So safety first. Uh, what we're doing with the Mosquito Habitat Mapper is we're not asking people to go out, have a mosquito land on their arm and take a picture. That would be putting people in harm's way. But uh, we're asking people to look in water, in, in pools of water for mosquitoes to find the larvae. You know, but larvae are, um, do not carry any disease. They do not bite. They don't pose a health hazard. But where there are larvae, there might also be adult mosquitoes, although not preferentially so. So it's always good to tell your students to always use uh, insect repellent uh, to cover them, their bodies. So there are fewer biting places. And so this is um, these are the mandatory uh, safety things that I need to mention with any NASA program. OK, so people ask me, Rusty, why NASA? You can't see mosquitoes from space. Well, the answer is no, you can't see mosquitoes from space. But what we do regularly um, sense using remote sense our remote sensing platforms are the environmental conditions that mosquitoes preferentially like. So you'll have um, you know the humidity, the temperature, the precipitation, the land cover. All those things are used in models to predict when and where you might have mosquitoes. Risk models for vector-borne disease that's used around the world. So these data are very important for that reason. And the work that we're doing as citizen scientists with the Mosquito Habitat Mapper is providing data that can either validate those models, um, complement um, remotely sensed data, and so on. So it is really important. And uh, what I always tell people, and I think this is might be one of the most exciting reasons why I really love working with this program, is citizen scientists make that connection between mosquitoes and space. So by um, finding the mosquitoes on the ground, by describing the land cover, we are then providing data that can then be used to complement those data that we obtain on remote sensing platforms from NASA satellites. So um, what are the things, because this is ESIP, a beloved organization, you know, the thing I wanna stress here is that if you use these, if you want to use the app and use these data, you'll be able to experience the full data cycle because uh, you'll be, Collect, uh, the students can collect data in the field using the, the, the uh, free Globe Observer app. They, they'll send the data by pressing a button to the archive. They can download that data as in, in various forms, either as a CSV file, or they can use a built-in visualization interface to look at the data. Um, you can actually, those students that are a little bit more advanced and have some understanding about coding can use Jupyter Notebooks to do data pre-processing, develop AI tools. There's so much you can do. So it's really exciting data. And, you know, students are making the connection between mosquitoes and also climate change. And as a climate change, um, I'm a paleo climate person originally, nothing to do with mosquitoes because I didn't go back to 65 million years ago. I was basically looking at the Holocene the last 12,000 years. But I got excited about mosquitoes because it is a way that you can talk about climate change in a concrete way. What's more personal than getting a mosquito bite, right? 
it's relevant, it's personal, and it's concrete. And we know these are the best ways to communicate about climate change. And so uh, there is this wonderful um, site that you can go to from Climate Central, and you can type in the, the, the city which is nearest you, and you can see how, how um, changes in the climate and the increasing temperatures have increased the number of days that mosquitoes are active in your region. So Reno, I think, takes the takes the role um, takes the um, what I want to say uh, the prize for 52 days longer than 1980. Where um, Heather lives, it's only about six days from Denver. So, you know, but th these are things that I think can really capture people's imagination. Some people say, oh, you know, when I was old, younger, mosquitoes didn't bite as hard. That's true, because we now have different mosquitoes that are invasive, like Aedes albopictus, like Aedes aegypti. And we are now looking for Aedes vitatus, which we just saw in Dominican Republic in Cuba, and it will probably be in Florida probably sometime this summer, these mosquitoes are especially dangerous because they carry a bunch of pathogens that cause diseases, including chikungunya, yellow fever, um, uh, Zika, dengue. And these are diseases we don't currently have in the US. But if we have the vectors, and then those vectors bite, bite someone who comes from a place where those diseases are located, will get those diseases then transmitted through the US. So the work we're doing is incredibly critical. So another thing is we're making connections between mosquitoes and public health. And um, this is, I think this is exciting because I've taught, uh, I've, I've, I've taught about 25 years uh, about mosquito, about earth system science. And I get a lot of students that just say, hey, you know, I never thought this was interesting. I only took biology classes in college. Well, this is a way that you can connect earth science data to biology and medicine. And, and you can learn more about what NASA does in the applied scientists and sciences, because they do a lot with human health, including, you know, um, uh, you know, some of the atmospheric pollutants, water pollutants, and also mosquitoes. So that's really important. You can also uh, make the connection between mosquitoes and social justice and environmental equity. And there've been a bunch of studies that have been done. Um, a, a really notable one is in Baltimore with the LTER site, where um, they actually looked at the distribution of mosquito baddies, the ones that cause diseases between um, uh, derelict and um, downgrading neighborhoods and those neighborhoods which have more resources. And they do find that there are distribution patterns that are um, once again, getting into that environmental equity issue associated with folks that have less resources. So we want you to understand how larval habitats change with land cover. And so what we're asking people to do is to use the Globe Observer app as a way to collect data. And this app is free. It, it's, it works on both Android and iOS platforms. You can find them in your, your, in your app store. Um, and it has four tools on it currently. There's clouds, mosquito habitat mapper, land cover and trees. And I'm just gonna be talking about the, um, the land cover and mosquito habitat mapper today. And I'm just gonna show you that it's a very easy interface that you say you're gonna make an observation. Then you say, where did you find standing water? You don't, there don't have to be mosquitoes in standing water because we need zero data because that, has, that makes the data set more reliable. Uh, but whenever people find standing water, we ask them to report it and then see if there are mosquitoes in those sites. And there are a whole bunch of different, you know, you can go in here, there's about 30 different categories that you can put in there. And that data is really critical. So here's the, the steps in the mosquito habitat mapper. You uh, collect, uh, you, the, uh, it automatically uh, collects the date, the time, the latitude, the longitude by pressing on this reset button at the bottom. You can refine the estimated accuracy of 65 meters when it powers on to, you know, down to three to five meters, depending on what kind of device you have, what the GPS um, receiver is in your, uh, in your, um, in your device, what kind of web services you're accessing and so on. Then you describe the source of the water. Uh, we ask people to take a little dip of the water, um, count the larvae, count the pupa, and we have pictures to show you what those look like. You can make comments. And then we have, if you're interested, you're able to identify that 
the larva using our built-in key. And the key is designed so that you can identify the three most important, medically important mosquito genera, which is Culex, Anopheles, and Aedes. And so um, you can do that. And then at the very end, uh, we, in, we invite people to participate in source reduction. This is the term that mosquito people use uh, for dumping out water or covering water with a screen or a lid or getting rid of garbage. Because every time you do that, you eliminate one habitat um, from use. And that's really, really critical. In fact, that is the best way to control vector-borne diseases worldwide. We ask you also, to upload photographs of these things. This is, these are the voucher photographs that we use so that we know that our data is really um, very accurate that is portrayed. And so we ask you to take pictures of the land cover and of the, of the mosquitoes that you see. And this is why citizen scientists are needed because these guys, these mosquito moms, they are so clever and they, they will go and they will find all kinds of places. Lots of the mosquitoes that you know about are usually are found in swamps and wetlands and uh, ponds and at your lake house and things like that. But um, so these dangerous mosquitoes in particular tend to prefer what we call container habitats and they like you know, manufacture containers. A beloved place are discarded tires. Um, sewers, you can find them in trash cans, you can find them in cups and bottles and garbage. Uh, we could even find them puddles and tire tracks and, um, and in um, footprints of animals. So this is why you need everybody doing this kind of work. Okay, so you're almost done. Once you've used the mosquito habitat mapper, we ask you then to turn to the new tool. And at the end of the app, it says, send all your mosquito habitat data now and make a land cover observation. So please do that because what we have found since the tool came available is scientists are very interested in the land cover associated with these mosquito habitats. So this tool works, if you can use one of these tools, you can use all of them. So this is the land cover tool. The first, the first page looks the same. The second tool, you're actually describing the reflectivity of the surface. So we know that um, the satellite data that we have that we're collecting from space is not showing snow, ice, or standing water um, or clouds, that what we are seeing is actually, you know, to distinguish the spectral signatures of these is really important. Then all you do is you take six pictures. You take a picture up, down, north, south, east, west. Um, these are pictures that I took just, a, just less than two months ago here in Boulder, Colorado, but the, com the computer has a uh, built-in compass. And uh, all you do is you line up the circles. So you don't need a compass to find those directions. And we ask you to angle it so you get about 50 meters if you can in the photo. These photos constitute the data that you use and then you just upload them. You could do an analysis, it takes a little bit more time. Uh, most important is to get those photographs. So if you just have just an extra five minutes, do the photographs. If you've got 10 or 15 minutes later, you can always go back and describe the percentage cover that you see. And you'll see that you can look at your, um, the pictures that have been taken in, in app. So here are some voucher photographs. Uh, these are from Africa, um, but Okay, so I think I'm almost at the end of my time here. I can't believe how fast time 10 minutes goes. Uh, we have a couple more minutes because we started. Carla tried to prepare me and I said, okay, I'm gonna talk as fast as I can. But we would like to invite you to be part of our this Globe Mosquito Habitat Photo Challenge. Uh, we are working with um, scientists that are working with AI using our photos, our mosquito photos, to develop an AI system to identify these mosquitoes automatically. So then we will be able to compare what the citizen scientist does in terms of observations and identification and what the machine does. So this is really, really important. We also, there are five other projects that have been funded by NASA and NSF that are taking our land cover photos and developing um, artificial intelligence machine learning procedures to classify and describe those photographs. So all these photographs are incredibly important for cutting edge research that's being done at NASA through EPSCoR and through NSF. And so for one month, we're really, we're gonna doing this photo challenge and we want to get everybody involved. So I really hope that you'll be excited and you'll tell your colleagues about this and get, get yourself and your colleagues and uh, some kids involved in collecting this data. 
So I just talked about the science and why it's important. So we're gonna have a kickoff webinar to talk about this on July 8th at this particular place, which is a bit.ly for Mosquito Challenge. Uh, please come if you'd like to know more about this challenge and please share this information with your uh, community of friends and peers. And I just, you know, because you guys are educators, I wanted to just say we do have a lot of resources. Um, in the activity tracker we have, uh, this is something like if you're running um, a boys and girls club or 4-H or a camp, uh, you can actually connect the data people are doing to different kinds of activities that we have created. Um, and people can you know, say, I'm gonna do at least one observe activity, one alert activity, one engage and one create, something like that. Um, but we have all those materials available for you on our website to uh, make learning fun. I just wanted to, and this is the maybe the most important for you folks who are involved in education, we have developed a lot of materials through uh, NASA and also USAID funding um, to uh, uh, also Department of State funding, I should also mention, uh, to develop some materials. Because uh, mosquito stuff happens a lot in the summer, we're finding that informal science education has been something that we have kind of focused on. And that's why we have some games like a mosquito habitat bingo and some of these, what are they called, cootie catchers, which are like little quizzes that people can ask each other about mosquito-borne disease and about mosquito biology. We've got some zines, some science cartoons. Um, there is a disease guide to help teachers who are interested in connecting uh, mosquitoes to disease. Uh, we have some actual labs that we have developed. Um, there is uh, here something about how to build a trap. Um, we also have a mosquito um, science notebook. This is designed for middle school students um, and for either use, we did this during the pandemic so people could do some science at home and it was very, very productive, but it's also available for schools. And then for uh, students that maybe are a little bit younger and don't have access to their parents or their own uh, mobile device, we also have some, some forms that people can fill out for data collection. So all these resources are available at these places. And I want to stress that myself and uh, my friend Cassie, uh, we are both your concierge. We want, if you contact us, we will get you the data that you need. We will, um, and show you how to download it and use it. It's quite easy using the Globe Observer, uh, the Globe platform. We, we can show you the classroom materials we have. And if you're interested in doing something in your classroom, either developing something, using some of these materials that are targeted to your school audience, or if you want to use the data in science fairs, please reach out to us because we're here to help you. We also have a bunch of really short videos. They're usually under five minutes and they tell you about how to do different things. Um, and so we, so we have a video library as well as um, some um, classroom informal materials and some lessons. So uh, we also have these um, organized by citizen science and formal education, elementary, sec secondary, and higher education. We have all we have resources for all of these different things. All right. So um, here is a handout. Um, I hope that you will download this and. Um, uh, share it with people. This is about the Mosquito Habitat Photo Challenge. Um, so please uh, take a look at that. See if you can get involved. If you just did five photos, if everybody just fought, did five photos, we would have more than enough photos we need for the AI work. So that's exciting. So um, I think we're done. I think I took an extra three minutes and I apologize, but I'm asking for questions now. Here are two baddies. Aedes scapularis was just found for the first time in December in Florida. We don't want this mosquito to expand across the US the way that Aedes aegypti and Aedes epilepticus have. Um, we wanna get snip that in the bud. So we are trying to get pictures of that and eliminate those sites. And like I already mentioned Aedes vitatus, which is originally from South America, but we found it now in Cuba. And um, we're also finding it now in Dominican Republic. The reason why we're finding these guys is because of climate change. They are now able to move their, extend their um, uh, range northward. And um, that's another interesting story that you can share with your students about how mosquitoes, which are personal, which bite you, which ruin your picnics, 
also are a way that we are tracking climate change in the biota. Okay, that's it, that's it. so I'm gonna stop here. Um, I would love to answer any questions informally, just turn off your mic um, because we are such a wonderful small group.